The following video is intended for mature audiences. It contains horror elements, adult themes, and language that might not be suitable for younger viewers. One Maniacs is a film that confidently mixes horror and dark humor, setting itself apart from the genre's more serious traditional films. Directed by Tim Sullivan, this remake of 2000 Maniacs from 1964 skillfully blends graphic violence, unashamedly politically incorrect humor, and southern gothic horror into a chaotic spectacle. The movie's appeal lies in its refusal to conform, it carves out its own eccentric and rebellious space that defies convention. The film is essentially a darkly comedic roller coaster ride that doesn't take itself too seriously. This light-hearted approach offers a refreshing change for audiences, tired of the darker, more intense horror offerings. For fans of horror comedy, 2001 Maniacs provides an unapologetically grotesque experience that cleverly contrasts absurdity with genuine moments of fear. While its politically incorrect and sometimes offensive content may not appeal to all, those who enjoy a mix of horror, comedy, and violence will find much to enjoy here. The basic premise of 2001 Maniacs is simple. A group of college students traveling to spring break ends up in Pleasant Valley, a charming southern town where they receive warm hospitality from the locals. However, these unsuspecting visitors are unaware of Pleasant Valley's dark secret. Led by the charismatic yet unstable Mayor Buckman, played by Robert England, the townspeople harbor resentment stemming from a Civil War massacre. They see these unsuspecting visitors as perfect victims for their revenge, all part of fulfilling an ancient curse. This sets the stage for a bloody spectacle, with each visitor meeting their demise in increasingly creative and horrific ways. Unlike typical horror films that use subtlety to create tension, 2001 Maniacs takes a unique approach. It revels in its ridiculousness, merging horror cliches with comedic elements that punctuate the violence with laughter. For audiences used to the relentless seriousness of modern horror, 2001 Maniacs offers a welcome break. The film's comedic tone is immediately obvious in its exaggerated portrayal of Southern hospitality complete with Confederate flags, strong accents, and an over-the-top Southern Belle aesthetic that sets the stage for the horrific events to come. It's important to note that the film's irreverence can be a double-edged sword. Some viewers may find elements such as the widespread use of Confederate imagery distasteful or offensive. These aspects are key to the film's satire, a deliberate attempt to caricature the antebellum South and its cultural legacy. However, this doesn't guarantee universal approval or appreciation. In my opinion, part of what makes this film attractive is its willingness to embrace absurdity and satirize these historical elements. 2001 Maniacs doesn't pretend to be anything other than what it is, an outrageous horror comedy that gleefully mocks both itself and the genre overall. The film's allure from a psychological standpoint rests on the motives of the townsfolk, particularly Mayor Buckman. The residents of Pleasant Valley are not mindless killers, but revenge seekers, retaliating for an old insult dating back to the Civil War era. A curse compels them to seek vengeance by sacrificing unsuspecting visitors in their horrific rituals. This deliberate intent separates these murderers from common horror villains. Their aim is not a relentless bloodlust, but a twisted sense of duty. Mayor Buckman is especially fascinating in this aspect. Robert England portrays him with devilish charisma as an exaggerated version of the Southern gentleman stereotype. Beneath his courteous exterior and warm hospitality hides a deeply sadistic character. On the other end are the victims, mainly depicted as typical spring break college students fitting into standard horror movie roles, innocent, carefree, and oblivious to the danger they're in. The film doesn't spend much time developing these characters, a strategic decision that works in its favor. 
2001 Maniacs isn't about weaving deep emotional narratives. It thrives on shock value and dark humor served in popcorn horror style. A significant attraction for viewers is the film's dedication to creating gruesome death scenes. True to splatter horror tradition, 2001 Maniacs relishes devising outrageous and morbid ways for characters to die, from a perverted twist on a southern BBQ to death by horses. Each scene is designed to be both terrifying and absurdly comedic with practical effects delivering gore that's both gut-wrenching and exaggeratedly cartoonish. The film's humorous take on violence distinguishes it from more serious slasher films. While brutal, deaths are presented so viewers may even laugh at the destruction. This mix of horrific violence and dark humor mirrors series like Evil Dead where blood flows freely while maintaining an overall playful tone. What makes 2001 Maniacs unique in the horror genre is its bold mix of satire, horror, and comedy. Many horror films, particularly the slasher subgenre, follow a predictable pattern. Isolate victims, hunt them and kill them with little variation. 2001 Maniacs turns this formula on its head by incorporating elements of dark comedy and southern gothic revenge narratives into its plotline. The result is a fresh and original take on horror conventions. The setting adds to this uniqueness. Unlike most horror films that favor urban landscapes or isolated cabins, 2001 Maniacs takes us to an enchanting southern town. The stark contrast between this picturesque backdrop and the horrific violence within it creates an unsettling atmosphere that's hard to shake off. The dissonance between Pleasant Valley's charm and the terrifying bloodshed adds an inherently eerie layer to the narrative. The film also taps into the rich tradition of Southern Gothic horror, a subgenre exploring the darker aspects of Southern history and culture, with Civil War ghosts looming large over its storyline. This gives it a distinctly American flavor. The film 2001 Maniacs skillfully combines dark humor and horror, making this its standout feature. It leans into the exaggerated acting and absurd plot twists that lead to the character's demise. The movie is fully aware of its absurdity and embraces it without hesitation. Lynn Shay's character Granny Boone exemplifies this balance perfectly. She brings a delightful touch of madness to her role, delivering lines with a mix of southern charm and unhinged craziness. This performance was my favorite in the movie. The humor in the film also serves as a cushion for potentially uncomfortable elements such as racial undertones and Confederate symbolism. These could be contentious. However, through self-awareness and satire, the film avoids crossing into offensive territory. Instead, it positions itself as a darkly humorous critique of Southern stereotypes. Is 2001 Maniacs destined to become a cult classic? Not every viewer will appreciate its blend of graphic gore scenes, politically incorrect humor, and over-the-top acting. But for those who enjoy horror movies that don't take themselves too seriously, it provides a refreshing departure from more serious narratives in the genre. The film's boldness in embracing its own ridiculousness while pushing boundaries makes it stand out in the horror category. For me, 2001 Maniacs was a breath of fresh air amidst an array of bleak and serious horror films I had been watching recently. It was enjoyable to relax and watch a movie that unabashedly indulged in fun. There are times when the film can be both gruesome and offensive, but it is also equally hilarious and innovative. It's best enjoyed late at night with friends who can appreciate its dark humor. 2001 Maniacs hints at potential cult classic status due to its unique blend of horror, comedy, and Southern Gothic elements. While it may not appeal to everyone, those who like their horror served with a hefty dose of dark humor will find this film highly entertaining. 2001 Maniacs is a slasher horror comedy satire that is one hour and 27 minutes and is rated R. I realize that this movie might not be for everyone, but I found it a nice break from watching more serious horror. The Southern Underworld gives it three and a half bloody knives. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel.
See you next time. Thank you for watching.